Hybridization is a useful bonding theory, however it does not explain the bonding in every chemical. So another theory is called molecular orbital theory. In this theory, rather than mixing individual atomic orbitals on one atom, this theory mixes atomic orbitals between different atoms. So for example, two hydrogen atoms can combine to form the diatomic hydrogen molecule. Each hydrogen atom has its electron in a 1s orbital in its ground state. Remember the orbitals are related to wave functions and we can add waves together in such as these pictures demonstrate. If we put one wave with a positive amplitude and add another wave with a positive amplitude they cause constructive interference and they give us a bigger wave that has a positive amplitude. We can also add waves together in a destructive interference way where positive overlaps negative and they cancel each other out. We're going to do the same thing with the wave functions for the hydrogen atom. Here is the nucleus of one hydrogen atom and we have the nucleus of the other. When they're separated, the two nuclei are farther apart and then as we push the two closer together, they form a molecule with the smaller internuclear distance. The positive sign in this picture is not a charge. This positive sign is the sign of the function, of the wave function. And it turns out that everywhere in the 1s orbital has the same sign, positive or negative. If we assume that the wave function has a positive sign for the sake of adding these waves together, we have to do two linear combinations. One combination is an addition and the other combination is a subtraction. Subtracting a positive number is the same thing as adding a negative number. So we could draw this second linear combination as taking a positive wave function and adding the negative to it. It gives us mathematically exactly the same result. So if we take the top example first, wherever positive overlaps positive we get constructive interference. And so in this picture everything is overlapping positive with positive. There's no destructive interference and we end up with a new function over the whole molecule rather than over individual atoms. And this is our molecular orbital. The other combination, positive minus positive, will give us some destructive interference. So that destructive interference takes place right in the middle as we push the two nuclei closer together. The hydrogen on the left is going to still have a positive region, but next to the nucleus and in between with the next nucleus, that will show destructive interference. And the same sort of thing happens to the other hydrogen atom, but now we're subtracting, so this will be a negative sign. The more important thing is to be able to look at the result and determine whether this result, resulting molecular orbital will be good for bonding or bad for bonding. The top picture in red shows one molecular orbital over the whole molecule and there are no destructive interference regions. This is good for bonding, so this molecular orbital is called a bonding molecular orbital. The picture at the bottom has a region where we saw the destructive interference, and this region is called a node. A node means there's zero chance of finding the electron. The electron can exist over here on the left, or it can exist over here on the right, but it can exist in the middle and that's where we need to put the electrons otherwise 
the nuclei would repel each other. So this picture shows it's bad for bonding, and we're going to call that an antibonding molecular orbital. If we put this together in one energy diagram, on the outside we see the separated hydrogen atoms, both with one electron and the 1s orbital. In the middle we have the molecular orbitals that are created. One is lower in energy. The one that's lower in energy is the bonding molecular orbital. And the one that's higher in energy is given a little star to show that it's higher in energy. That's the antibonding molecular orbital. When we put in the two hydrogen electrons, the first one will go into the lowest energy orbital, spin up, and the second one will fill up that bonding MO. So notice the energy shows stability because we went to a lower energy state and we can calculate the bond order by using this formula. One half the number of electrons in bonding MOs, which in this picture is two, because we have two electrons in this sigma 1s bonding MO, and there are zero electrons in the antibonding. So one half of two is one. A bond order of one is the same thing that the Lewis theory of bonding showed us earlier.